will interface with the FBI on this uh, dead body. No, 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 we don't want those idiots bumbling around in this. Burn the body, get rid of it. Hello and welcome to Question Entertainment. I'm Christopher Willette. And I'm Emily Mean, and today we'll be looking at... So in this movie, they have multiple storylines that all get entangled when a low-level CIA agent is fired, his wife is having an affair, locals at a fitness club have stolen his memoirs, which they think are high-level secrets, <laughs> and they're trying to sell to the Russians. And even the Russians aren't sure why. <laughs> That, it sounds funny, it, <laughs> but, then you, but then you watch the movie and you're like, mm. So how was oh, it? Okay. <laughs> I didn't think it was great. It's a black comedy. Definitely, yes. And I don't like black comedy. I don't... But you liked Lady Killers? Well, I remember liking it. Maybe it just was enough. Lady I, Killers was lighter. I like movies that are different. I like movies that are offbeat. I like yep. movies that kind of surprise you. But. When Brad Pitt gets shot in the, in, the, in the closet, I was like, oh! It just, to me, it's not funny. It's tragic. And yes. I, get, I get that's the point. It's supposed to be like, he thinks he's doing this very noble thing for her, and it's supposed to be kind of funny in a weird way because he's actually stealing nothing for nothing right. for nothing. But at the beginning, I just thought it was slow. And once it got going, I thought it was funny. And now I'm just watching a funny, lighthearted comedy, and all of a sudden somebody's shot in the pit face. You're not expecting it. And by somebody who's always bragged about carrying his gun and stuff, but he's never fired it. This movie just made me uncomfortable in a way I kind of enjoyed. And going on, I would. the only thing I didn't find entertaining about it is in this, like I'd usually bring up later, but the constant use of the F word. Mm was to the point where it didn't matter what word it was. Like, you may or may not be offended by that word, but by the end of that movie, it's just like, say something else. Is it good for kids? Uh, if you haven't already guessed, no. Sex toys shooting people. <laughs> There's a lot of bad things here, and there are several sex scenes I was impressed with, though they showed a lot how held back they were. I was very shocked at George Clooney's sex toy because I've never seen one of those in a movie. Me either, and again, you thought he'd built a weapon right. and had lured this woman yes. into the cage <laughs> to do something horrible to her, and you're like, what? Yes, so death, <laughs> sex toys, sex, and themes that are just way above maybe a very mature teen but even then, parents preview beforehand. I don't think it's a teen movie. No. No, it isn't, but... I think teens will see it, and I think they'll survive, because they see horrible things all the time, right. but that's not really a justification right. to rent it for your kids. For a complete breakdown of everything on the screen, check screenit.com. What about spiritual issues? First of all, Coen Brothers often have spiritual issues. Lady Killers <laughs> is the plan of God versus the intelligence of man and God wins. Raising Arizona, they go through Judaism, Mormonism, Christianity, and seem to give credence to a lot of them. Brother, where art thou? Goes back and forth and seems to come to some humanistic mix of Christianity versus going your own way. As far as burn after reading, the one character we like in this movie is the manager of a fitness club who used to be a priest who has a sincere love for the woman who thinks she needs to look better before anybody will love her. She instead ends up with a husband cheating on his wife who she thinks is free and has a little conversation about the way life works is that you have to go for what you feel and have to live by your feelings. This movie is a negative example. The world view of go by your feelings is clearly stated. We see almost every character clearly going by what they feel. And every one of them ends up dead. The one character who wants to live honorably gets sucked in and dies. And the health club woman who states you need to live by your feelings, if she just gave that up and opened her eyes, 
she would have had everything she was looking for. Instead, she gets what she thinks she needs, and the one thing she actually wanted ends up dead in the street because of her. Every character is self-obsessed in some way. Yes. Even characters you don't really see much, like George Clooney's wife. Yes. She, she would be probably the innocent. If, yes. If, if the movie had ended without the divorce thing and the cheating, because she did cheat, right? Yes, at the end they have it's, one shot to show you that she's got a lover on the road with her. Right. If you didn't have that, she would be like the innocent. But nobody's but let nobody's, off the hook. But nobody's innocent, because other than possibly Brad Pitt, because he's just so stupid. Right. And he just does what everybody tells him to do. But still, then he's not innocent, because he shouldn't be that stupid. Right. So there's nobody innocent in the movie. Interesting. Well, the one person who's innocent is the ex-priest who now runs a fitness club. But like you say, in the end... He's corrupted, yes. Yes, nobody's let off the hook in this movie. That brings me back to Citizen Kane. You have a bunch of characters wanting the world, gaining the world, and profiting none. That was beautiful to me. What's our recommendation? Meh. If you like a black comedy, if you liked Fargo, if you like, like my husband likes Fargo. Yeah. Because he's crazy. And he liked Fargo better. He didn't, he didn't, so if you like Fargo, it doesn't mean you're going to like Burn because Brian was very yeah. middle of the road about Burn. But if you like a black comedy, if you like some of the Coen Brothers movies, if you, you know, then you might like it. There were funny parts. There's the message, I totally hear you, but it just, it still wasn't worth watching for me, like I kind of wanted my hour and a half back. Except for, I, I would never give back that one minute, <laughs> or like 10 seconds of Brad Pitt dancing. So you just want to watch the preview again. <laughs> That's right, yeah. I want to see the preview. Or when, or when, I'm sorry, this is going off, but when he punches Brad Pitt in the nose, and Brad Pitt's like, <laughs> what are you doing? That was, that was pretty awesome. Brad Pitt was pretty awesome. Yeah. As far as burn after reading, it's very hard to recommend with the sex toys, the sex, the violence, and the constant swearing that just becomes annoying. I do think it has a redeeming message. If you have friends who are watching this movie, it'd be a great thing to watch and a great transitional conversation to discuss deeper things in life. On YouTube, please click subscribe. On our blog, please click the RSS feed. I can't believe you just recommended a sex toy movie. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not recommending. <laughs> and I, the I, I, I have to, I have to say this. When you list it off like that, when you, <laughs> when you say, well, because of the sex toys, the sex, the violence, constant swearing, you, you would think it's worse than it is. I do have to say that, you know. We, when you just list it like that, you think, I can't believe these two people <laughs> sat through the whole movie. It's not like that. Right. In its defense. The difference between my thoughts on the Hulk and Burn After Reading, where in the Hulk, having sex was just the natural progression of a guy and a girl being in love. Mm -hmm. And it was totally outside of marriage, and those characters were held up as honorable and someone to emulate. Where in Burn After Reading, you have people killing, you have people sleeping around, you have people destroying each other's lives, and it's all shown as horrible. Yeah. Where if you go to the Bible, the Bible has people killing, the Bible has people sleeping around, the Bible has people cheating on each other, the Bible has people destroying each other's lives, and it's all shown as damnable sin. Mm. And in that way, though the Hulk is easier to take, I think the Hulk is further from the way the Bible presents these issues hmm. than burn after reading. Okay, I hear you. However, two things. First of all, do you think that's how most people watch it? Not <laughs> at all. Okay, that's, that's, that's why... what I'm saying. Most people are just gonna remember sex stories or whatever. Right. The other thing I wanna point out is you compared sex story movie to the Bible. <laughs> <laughs> if there was less swearing and we did not see the sex toy, I would unequivocally recommend this movie. I will not see this movie again because of that. Yeah. But where yeah. most people will not get that out of this film, that's why I recommend if your friends have all rented it mm -hmm. and they're talking about it, I think it would be a good thing for you to see this movie because you could get in on that conversation and it's very natural to then discuss 
does following your heart work? Report back to me when, uh, I don't know, when it makes sense.